I do this as much as possible. Here's what I start with. Let me tell you all the things engineering is not. Let's start with that, okay? Let's narrow it down. So what is it not? And this hopefully you'll relate to. It's not sitting in a cubicle alone. It's not Dilbert. Now, fortunately, most kids don't know who Dilbert is now, okay? Yeah, yeah. That's a, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Now, I, Gil, Dilbert's funny. I like it, too. I've always been able to laugh. But it really isn't the best depiction of going into engineering, right? Even the, uh, you know, the hairdos are pretty bad. So um, it, that's not what it is. It's not sitting in a cubicle all by yourself. It's not just going through math problems all day long, right? It's not only for nerdy people. It's also not only for smart people, right? It takes all types. And it's not hard, OK? These are the things it's not. Now let me tell you the things it is. What is engineering? It's being creative, right? It's really thinking and being creative. And the reason you're being creative is to solve problems. And it goes back to that making a difference, right? Solving problems. This, uh, this picture up in the upper right-hand corner, that is taken in the uh, Brazilian uh, rainforest, it's, it's the Amazon River Basin, and we in particular have built a system down there to do what we call wide area surveillance. So uh, 10 years ago they were not able to detect when they had illegal gold mining going on, illegal deforestation going on, drug trafficking, very difficult to de detect. So we put a system in that allowed the Brazilian government to be able to detect, to monitor, uh, detect, and then prevent those things from going on in their own country. So that is, a, to me, the greatest example of being creative. We came up with a, a, it was a great problem to go off and solve. We were creative, came up with a solution, and went off and, and uh, worked as a team. There's a whole bunch of different co com companies that came together working with us and the Brazilian government to solve this problem, right? And make a difference in the world, right? If you can, and you can talk kids understand why would you save the, the rainforest, right? It's a great example of what engineers can do. We work in diverse teams, so going back to sitting in the cube alone, we never do that, we're always in teams. We've learned that diverse teams provide the best potential solutions, so we need everybody's input. We've learned how to get everybody's input, and I heard some conversation here in the previous session about you know, that waiting because there's the, the girl in the room that won't raise her hand. Right? She takes you know, five or ten seconds before she'll even consider raising her hand. It's the same way in the workforce. There's the people who have the best ideas, but they're afraid to say it. So when you work in these diverse teams, you have to make sure that you take everybody's input and give everybody a chance to have that input. And back to that making a difference in the world. For me, the making the difference in the world today is I work for a company um, that provides our, our overseas warfighters with um, with the solutions that ultimately save their lives, right? So when I'm driving to work in the morning, I think about the decisions I'm going to make that day and how 10 years from now, or even five years from now, someone's going to be using that and they're going to want it to work and they're going to want it to work right in the first time. And I think about that every day when I drive to work. I think that there'll be mothers and fathers and daughters and sons using that. That's, that's, that's my way of saying I know I'm making a difference in the world, okay? And bottom line, it can be an adventure, and it can be really fun. And that's why I tell the story about I never thought I'd go to Greenland, and I never thought I'd go to the Australian outback as an electrical engineer. It can be anything you want it to be. It doesn't have to be sitting in an office or sitting in a lab. So getting this message out, right? So we have to get this message out. And how do you do that? It takes every one of us to do that. And it's, it's literally what we call time on target in our field. So it's like, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. We mentor in groups, and you mentor one-on-one, -on -one, and you do it continuously. And I know all, all of you do that. For me personally, mentoring has been really critical from my early days as a schoolgirl all the way through. My fifth and, sixth grade, fifth and sixth grade science teacher was phenomenal. She's the one who turned me on to science. My high school math teacher just showed me how you could use math to truly solve key problems. And then all the way through college, the professors, big difference in my life. My, uh, when I was in graduate school, one of the deans was a very, uh, a, a very uh, dear mentor for me. And um, I was a couple years into graduate school. And two years into graduate school, you have to take a uh, qualifying exam for the program that I was in. 
And it's an intense, you know, four, two times four hour type exam and it's everything you've ever learned and you spend a month studying and all you do is worry about what you didn't study. And, and I went and I took this exam and I failed. And I had never failed an exam before. I had never even gotten a B before. And I failed this exam. So I went to see this mentor and I told her I failed the exam and I said to her, well, obviously I know what I have to do. I have to quit. I'm not, obviously I'm not cut out for this program. I can't do this. And I got up to leave and she made me sit back down and she said, no, this is the first time in your life you've ever been challenged. Mm. Right? This is that point where you have to say, I'm going to step up to the challenge. So she, if it wasn't for her, I would, have, I would have dropped out. Now what I didn't even tell her or anyone else is all the guys failed too. Everybody failed. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we're the most critical, right? So mentors make a huge difference. So we have to get the message out. We have to get the message out. And, and it's all of us together mentoring that it's going to do that. It's really a proven and effective tool. These pictures are taken of mentors meeting with students. And these are Lawrence High School students. So Lawrence High School is a, Lawrence is a city uh, in kind of north, uh, northern Massachusetts. And it is a low socioeconomic city, okay? So what we do at Raytheon, and this is a particular example that I want to share with you. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the pictures, but let me go forward. I'm going to share a particular example. It's called the Stand and Deliver Program. And this is the best data um, that I've seen to really show the importance of mentoring. So what we do is every Tuesday and Thursday, 150 students come from uh, Lawrence High School to two facilities at Raytheon, Tewksbury and Andover. They bus them, the school buses them to us. And in the cafeteria is sitting about 100 engineers waiting for these students to come in. They give up their afternoons on Tuesday and Thursday. And they meet for a couple hours with these students. So let me just go, well, oh, the back button doesn't work. But anyway, that picture at the bottom was all those engineers meeting one-on-one -on -one with the students. And what they do is they, they may help them with their math or science. They may talk to them about uh, what we're doing, you know, how we're applying math and science to what we're doing there. They may help them with their, if they're at that stage of their high school career, they may help them with their college uh, applications. Mm. Okay, so it's one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and they're, they're matched up, so it's not a different one every time. They may have two mentors in case one, one's on business travel. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the data to prove it works, okay? Upper corner here on the left, that's the Lawrence High School enrollment. I told you it was low socioeconomic. They have about a 40% dropout rate. Wow. Right? That's, so that's the enrollment. That's just unbelievable. Right? The uh, chart on the bottom here shows you what we've been able to do. So we track the students. So we started this in the 2005-2006 time frame, that academ acad academic year. Okay? And we track the students. So we have them for every you know, freshman. We have freshmen through, through seniors. And we track them each year. So in 2010, it was the first time we had this batch that had gone through in all the years and graduated from high school. Okay? And there were 90, per, 90 so of these students, 95% are minorities, 50% are females. Okay? 2010 graduates, 33% of that group went on to study a STEM major in college. 33%. Show me another program. Show me another high school. 33%. And this year's class, they just, just graduated, 42%. I hope maybe all of you have schools doing that. That would be great. But I know those numbers are remarkable. So it just shows you that that one-on-one -on -one mentoring makes a difference. It takes a lot of people. It takes a lot of time investment, but it makes a difference. Okay, and up in the, up, the upper hand corner here is MCAST is our Massachusetts uh, standardized aptitude test. The blue bar are, is the, the students that have gone through the program, the stand and deliver program. That's their test scores each year. Whoops, let me get rid of that. The red is the Lawrence High School average scores, and the green is the average for the state. So again, they're doing at or better than the state average, all of these students. 
So it really shows that mentoring is critical. Okay. So I know you all have to catch a bus. So how many people here are, are teachers? Like every day, you're, you, so most of you. I've always wanted to give homework to teachers. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Here's what we need to do, every one of us. So if you're an educator, teacher of any type, or guidance counselor, it's really, really important that you learn about what the STEM professionals do. As many examples as you can get. People like me who've been to Greenland, people who have, have you know, worked on you know, finding a cure for cancer, as many examples as you can get to find out what they do, please share that with your, with your girls. Um, invite STEM professionals into the classroom. So there are a huge amount of organizations of, focused just on women in STEM fields. So uh, Society of Women Engineers, there's uh, uh, Association of Women in Computing, and Women in Science, Women in Physics. I mean, there's, there's an association of women for every STEM field that you can think of. Each one of those organizations has thousands of members across the uh, country. You could contact them, ask them to provide a list to people who will go into your classroom and share their experiences so the, the girls can get that one-on-one -on -one hearing what the professionals do. It, it just could be that one that talks to them that says, that's what I want to do. So the more that you have get into your, to get into your classroom, get in front of the students, the better. And then really encourage your students to get a mentor. Because no one ever said to me when I was in middle school, you need a mentor. Right? I didn't really hear that until college. That was the first time someone said to me, you need to find a mentor. And it's very prevalent in, in uh, professional in, in industry. It's very common to be talking about mentoring. But no one ever said it to me when I was going through um, my school years. So that's really key to start talking about mentoring so that the, the students are thinking, yeah, I need to find some, somebody to talk to. And um, let's see who we have next. Industry members. So who else, who's besides, who else is here from industry? <laughs> just a few of us. Just a few of us. So industry plays a key role across the country. Uh, obviously, in particular, those of us uh, that are a STEM-focused industry to educate our engineers and other STEM professionals on the message that needs to go out there because you have to give the right message. You don't want someone to have put all that time in and not be giving the right message. And it's easy to let that happen. It's easy to resort back to, yeah, it's really hard. You have to love math because you know what? You don't have to love math. Math's a tool, right? So those are the types of messages you need to make sure everybody's educated on. And then get, get out there, get into the classroom. That's our job. It's part of what everybody should be on their goals every year as a, as a STEM professional. Get into the classroom and talk to students. Is there anybody here from higher ed? Good, great. Okay, so higher ed plays a key role, obviously, in recruitment and retention of women in, in the STEM fields, a critical role. And we need to educate those, those girls who have chosen a STEM field, we need to educate them on the importance of what they've done and also the importance of the role